with the ball at the baseline. In deep. No. Haskin doesn't get it. Tapped out by Peyton to Celestine. 16-foot jumper. No. Beavers cannot get it down. And Reynolds rebounds for Oregon. A 42% shooting mark for the Beavers at this point in the game. A dreadful mark well down from their season standard of 52%. Beavers staying in there. Man to man defense. Here's Brandon trying the lane. Lays off and he fouled. Yes, he is. It's going to be Martin picking up number three. Now well, you got the seventh foul, isn't it, in the Oregon State? It'll be the Beavers' seventh team foul. You're right. So Oregon the bonus now. Didn't, not sure how they got Martin for that foul. It was easy. Oh, it's Bradley. It's Bradley who has the foul, not Martin. It'll be the first to Bradley. The referees just call it. They make it easy, don't they? <laughs> Brandon at the free throw line for two shots. Every time Oregon State gets a chance to go ahead, Oregon comes back. Yep, they just can't put him down. But again, we'll go back to what we said at the end of the first half. They've got to feel good shooting this poorly and still this close. It's just a two-point spread. Three-point advantage Oregon. They can feel this good, but as the time goes along, they won't feel as, as well as they do right now. 10-20 remains. Three-point Oregon lead, 50-47. DeMartin. Nice move on Lucas. Celestine was out of bounds in contact with the ball, so it is Oregon possession. We're halfway through the second half, and it's a three-point lead for Oregon, and the Beavers will pressure full court. Oregon has had one 10-second violation this half. They break the pressure this time. Pass inside to Nixon. No! Does not get it. Close the layup, and Martin comes down with a rebound for the Beavers. Celestine almost made the, made the big mistake, really. He should have been ball side. You can't let a man cut down to that basket and be up. On the opposite side of the ball, he was wide open coming through. Brantley drains one from 14 feet, and it's a one-point spread once again. 50-49 Ducks. Nixon double team. Brandon to fight. Jams it home. And draws a foul. Fife enjoys that jam, doesn't he? The foul to Haskin is second. There he goes. He loves to do it. He gets up there and he puts it down with some force, too, doesn't he? He was way above the rim of that one. Six feet, 11, and still growing. Big crowd favorite here at Mac Court. And one shot coming for Bob Fife, a 58% foul shooter on the season. Fife with 11 points tonight. Drawing his third starting assignment of the year. Makes it 53-49 Oregon. 9.05 to go. He keeps playing like this. He might have a lot more starting assignments. Oh, I'm sure he will. Plays with a lot of poise for such a youngster. Baden on the baseline. Got it. He can even play the pivot, can he? He plays guard, forward, pivot, everything. 11 points in this half for Peyton, 18 in the game. Peyton, of course, had a 48-point performance against Loyola Marymount. The most ever scored by a Pac-10 guard in one game. 53-51 Ducks. Brandon draws the foul with a nice move. And Celestine has his second. Only two team fouls in this half for Oregon, but Oregon State has fouled nine times already. If Brandon wasn't the NBA, he'd have got rid of that ball somehow. Not only they're going to give him two or one and one, they don't even know if he really shot that ball. I think they'll have, he'll give him two shots. Huh? Well, he did. He was smart enough to get rid of it, I guess. Brandon at the line will shoot two.
Charles McKinney has come into the game for the Beavers. His first appearance tonight. The freshman for Portland's Wilson High School. McKinney, who was key in Wilson's championship last year, has played only 40 minutes on the season. One to go for Brent. Fourteen points in the game for Brandon. 54-51, Ducks on top with 8.20 to go. Peyton needs one more assist to set a new standard in the Pac-10. Still with a dribble, look at that. Offensive foul to Peyton. Third foul for Gary Peyton. And Red, this is the one thing Oregon State worries most about with Peyton is keeping him in the game, keeping him out of foul trouble. Well, I think they got him for hooking the guy, I believe. Yes, he fell from here. Let's see what happens here. He goes by, and he's got his arm around him. That's what did he shoved him with his arm, and they caught him. Looked awfully light as we view the replay, but nevertheless, a foul. 7.59 remaining. And McKinney picks up his first foul. Oh, it's been a parade to the foul line for the Ducks in this second half. And in the first half, they, uh, you know, there weren't that many free throws. Really, in two, I think Oregon shot a couple of them, and Oregon State shot a couple of them. That's all. 7.59 to go with a three-point Oregon lead and a one-and-one one opportunity at the line for Helms. Martin on, Bradley, inside again to Haskin, draws the double team and is fouled, he pushed, Fife I think, yes it is, second foul to Bob Fife and only the 13th foul for the Ducks in his back. We're going to take a break but we're coming right back, by 3, 54-51 at Mac Court. Mount Pilchuck Ski and Sports, door number two, is something to behold. An entire store dedicated to the best values and selection in ski wear. All from the very best manufacturers. Door number two has an unbelievable collection of ski wear for the entire family. Come to the mountain, Mount Pilchuck Ski and Sport, and door number two, 10822 Highway 99, South Everett. Espionage is the game. Once you're dead, the game's over. A game with no beginning. She was injected with a fast-acting toxin. A game without end. I'm sending you back, Alec. Albert Finney. They want to get me. Why kill her? And George Siegel star in a Showtime original movie. You lose a hand, you fix the pack. Isn't betrayal what this endless game is about? The Endless Game. Well, not only can you enjoy men's basketball on Prime Sports Northwest, but you can watch exciting women's play as well. Saturday, January 20th, catch the women's Oregon State team meet the Washington Huskies live at 7.30. Prime Sports Northwest, your prime source for women's basketball action this season. 7.44 remaining here at McCourt, 54-51 Oregon. Corvallis, or rather Oregon State, has never had the lead. Kenny and Peyton in the backcourt. Peyton in the paint, scores it. Big second half for Peyton with 15 points. 13 points, excuse me. That time down, they played him man to man. They had the zone and the other four guys. And once again, it's a one point spread. Reynolds. And Haskins let him come. Well, Haskins made a move to him, and he was afraid of his man getting a dunk, and he didn't go to him. And Brantley was there to help Haskins on fight. Yep. 56-53. This is McKinney. McKinney, Brantley, Payton. And here's Martin outside. No. Reynolds, the rebound and the quick outlet to Brandon. Now you talk about a difference in this Oregon team. 
Well, one of the big differences, look at how many times they pass the ball off to somebody else for a basket when they're penetrating. Brandon, no. Haskin can't hold it. Brandon. 11 points in this half for Brandon. 58-53, Oregon stretches their advantage to five. Plenty of time remaining, 15 to go. Uh-oh, stolen, almost stolen by Brandon. And this time it is, no, Peyton gets it back. Haskin high for the rebound and scores it. Outstanding job on the boards tonight for Haskin. He has 11 rebounds along with his 12 points. Three-point duck lead. Nice job by Brantley. Peyton for Haskin, no. And Haskin was shaken up. He's all right. He staggered just a bit, but he seems to be all right. He didn't adjust to the pass. 58-55 Oregon. Brandon gets paid. Really not a bad idea for Brandon to challenge Peyton because Peyton's got three fouls and one more foul leaves him in trouble. Out of bounds, middle of the Oregon ball. It'll come in at the baseline for Oregon with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Reynolds will play it in for the Ducks. Blocked by Haskins. Picked up by Celestine. He has Peyton on the other wing. Celestine takes it home. And that's the kind of a block you want. You block it so that your team gets the ball back. It's a doubly effective block because your team gets a basket as a result of it. For the fourth time, Oregon State has moved within a point of the lead. The ball thrown away. And we're going to have a timeout used this time by Oregon's Don Munson. 4.45 to go. We're coming down to the wire. The Ducks have a one-point advantage. Prime Sports Northwest is your Pac-10 basketball channel. The Hurricanes of Miami blow into Heck Ed to tip off against the Huskies of Washington in an NCAA men's basketball showdown. Catch all the action live Monday, January 15th, beginning at 6.30. Some people have birds. I have a rat. It's the one and only Jonathan Winters. How quick you are. With a traveling road show that's... Ooh, raking in the dough, boy. Warning, you may find it painfully funny. <laughs> and dangerously wild. Might as well get in on it. Hi, I'm Jonathan Winters. Welcome to my incredible road show and these four outstanding performers. Seen only on Showtime. We're gonna be on Showtime! <laughs> well, you might have expected this type of finish. A one-point lead with 4.45 to go here in jam-packed Mac Court. 10,063 fans here to sell it out. Oregon State ball and a goal here will put the Beavers on top. They have not yet led. Baton against Brandon. Ball does not go down, but there is a foul in the paint. It's a duck foul. Peyton has really had a fine scoring second half. Watch him work here in the paint. Works for a good shot, but was fouled before the shot. He's got quite a height advantage on Brandon, so what he does, he takes him into the paint and tries to do his scoring. That foul is to Brandon, his second. Only the fourth team foul for the Ducks, and Peyton fails at the foul line. Peyton, 67% from the stripe on the year. He makes this one. We're tied for the first time. He does, and we are tied. 
at 58. I think this, if Reynolds makes any points here, it'll be the first points for the second half for Reynolds. He had a great first half. I don't think he scored in the second half, has he? No, I don't think so. That is the 11th foul of this half against Oregon State to just three for Oregon. It's charge of Celestine is third, and Reynolds will be at the line. All Far West Classic team this year scored 13 points in that championship game against the Ducks, or against the Beavers, rather. Lucas fighting hard, and is fouled. I think it's for Peyton, I believe. That's number four indeed on Gary Peyton. One more in his history. This really was an interesting call because there was a tremendous amount of contact going on under there before that. Could have called a foul on Haskin earlier. Could have called a foul on Lucas also. Yep. Lucas. Four points in this half off from the stripe. Ten points in the game. He's One four. point lead for Oregon. What's he, four for five and he's a 61% shooter? Well, he's four or five from the line in this half, yes. Two-point advantage, Oregon, 60-58. Every time Oregon State challenges, Oregon rises to the occasion. We have 4.05 to go here in Eugene. Eight. Yes. Like 14, let's see, 16 points in this half for Peyton, 23 in the game. I think he's going to take it upon himself now. When he goes down there, he's going to take him. There's no player in the conference that takes charge and takes over a game like Gary Payton. Uh, very few guards in the nation can do that. Brandon. 62-60 Ducks. Boy, Celestine is getting a lot of playing time tonight. Peyton off the window. Yes. They will count the goal. Yes, indeed. We're tied at 62, and a duck foul on the play to Brandon. That is three on Terrell Brandon. There you see it. And Gary Payton has an opportunity now to give the Beavers their first lead of the game with 3.28 remaining. The Beavers lead it. 63-62. The bad news is Gary Payton is playing with four fouls. But the Beavers does, go. Excuse me. Stolen by Bradley as the Beavers go back to their pressure. And Oregon fouls. You, you talked about Payton having four fouls, but he Brandon. plays with four fouls about as well as anybody I've ever seen, really. Well, Brandon has just picked up his fourth foul. And Oregon will use a timeout with 321 remaining in the game. And the Beavers on top, 63-62. Oregon with a total of five team fouls. Oregon State has been over the limit for some time. Well, actually, uh, it's about, what, 12 to 5, something like that, or 13 to 5. But even though they don't get to shoot a free throw here, what it does do, it brings them up close to that one-on-one -on -one situation because it's important for Oregon State to get into that one-on-one -on -one situation. So even though that foul did not result in a free throw, it brings Oregon closer to that seven foul situation. Just checking uh, Gary Payton's scoring here in the second half. He has 19 points in the second half, 26 points in the game. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be Brandon right now because Payton has made up his mind. Don, when I come down that court, I'm going to take it in and score. And so far, he's taken it down there every time and put the ball in a hole. Now, we're just checking Gary Payton's assists, and he has the necessary fourth assist, so he has become tonight the all-time assist leader in the history of the Pac-10 Conference, surpassing UCLA's Pooh Richardson. But it would all be spoiled, of course, if the Beavers lose it. And Oregon has controlled this game the vast majority of the playing time tonight. 
321 to go, however, and Oregon State with the advantage, 63-62. Beaver ball at the baseline. Payton to play it in. Plays out long to Celestine. Fife is guarding Haskin inside. Here's Payton in the paint. Two more. He made a great move there. He made a cut to the basket, called Brandon to chase out, and he pulled back out. It was wide open to get that pass from Celestine and put the ball in the basket. Three-point Oregon State lead. Three minutes to go. Oregon has shown some patience. They're not panicking. They got that ball on the outside. They're going to work for the kind of shot that they want. They figure Reynolds has an edge over Celestine down deep. And they're trying to get it into him. Helms, Brandon, Lucas, Fife, and Reynolds on the floor for the Ducks. Two and a half minutes remain in this game. Brandon for three. Yes! Well, we've talked a lot about the play of Gary Payton in the second half, but how about Brandon? 16 points in this second half, and we are tied again at 65. 2.15 to go. Celestine in the corner, trying to get it inside to Haskin. It's broken up by Fife. So the Beavers turn it over with two minutes to go, and the score tied at 65. That's the 10th turnover tonight for Oregon State. They average 11 a game. Reynolds, yes. 20 points for Pete Reynolds. Somebody lost their man. Nobody was playing Reynolds at all. A two-point Oregon lead with a minute 38 to play. Brantley well short. That might have been blocked. Celestine can't get it down. Martin the rebound. Cannot score it on the putback. And this time it does go down as Gary Payton collects two more. 21 points in this second half. 28 in the game for Gary Payton. Tied at 67. In this game, like so many others in this long series, is coming down to the final moments. 57 seconds to go. Lucas trips, no foul, two officials were on it, and there is no foul called, much to the chagrin of the fans here, 50 seconds to play, and Oregon State will use a timeout, the game clock shows 48 seconds remaining, Oregon State 67, Oregon 67, wow, what a finish, again we'll repeat that Oregon State has dominated this series. They've won nine of the last ten games played here in Eugene, and the last time that the Ducks won one here was on a last-second jumper in 88. We may have another one of those tonight, Red. Well, I think early we missed, we, we doubted very much that there would be a kind of a game that wouldn't be very exciting. This kind of a game is exactly what we expected. The crowd has really got into it because it's the kind of game they wanted to see. Well, I guess they wanted to see Oregon State get murdered, but that's the game that they're in it, they're enjoying it. It's a, it's a real great game to watch. It's enjoyable to watch the fans have been all noisy as possible, and Oregon State has reacted to them very, very well. Oregon has showed me an awful lot of character. They've lost the lead, but they fought back. Whenever the challenge came about, they rose to, to meet the challenge. Well, Oregon is a vastly improved team from last year, as we've mentioned before. They have a winning record and a two and two conference mark at this juncture, greatly aided by the addition of Terrell Brandon and Kevin Mixon, although Mixon has been pretty well controlled tonight. He has a total of just two points in the game. Well, here we go, 48 seconds on the game clock, tied at 67. It'll be Oregon State possession. Payton, Martin, Celestine, Brantley, and Haskin on the floor for the Beavers. Alabegovic started the game, but has played only five minutes tonight. I would guess that Oregon State has about a uh, seven-second seven difference. I believe they're going to play with that ball for a while. Seven more seconds on the game clock than on the shot clock. Of course, Oregon's content to let them do it, too, because Oregon will have at least seven seconds if Oregon State should yep. miss. Right. Now you can see the time 
the bottom of your screen. That's the game time remaining. Shot clock is under 10. Peyton will take it for two. Haskin can't wow. get it, and a foul. Haskin. Oh, my. Third foul to Haskin. A one-and-one -one opportunity for Oregon with 12 seconds to go. Oregon State has lost only twice this year, once at home to Loyola of Marymount and once on the road to Memphis State. And they are in serious jeopardy of dropping another road contest to arch-rival Oregon. And an excellent free throw shooter up there. Reynolds, an 83% foul shooter, fifth best mark. Oh, oh wait a minute, it's Spike. <laughs> Reynolds, was, Reynolds was trying to slip in because of his ability at the line. Fife is a 58% foul shooter. Tonight, he is three of three from the strike. Big shot, no! Rebound, Brantley, we are still tied. Eight seconds to play. Celestine, four seconds. Yes, Haskin! Game's over. And that's it. They're gonna give him three seconds, I think. They're gonna give him three, two, uh, two seconds, I believe, they should have no more than two. Or maybe the, one. The one game, second. The game clock shows no time remaining. And I believe you're right. I think they're going to put one, one second. second back on the clock. They are going to put time back as the clock is now recycling. One second to play. That goal by Haskin gives Oregon State a two-point lead with one second remaining, and Oregon will have possession. Not a whole lot you can do in one second. Now we don't really know that's one second. It's supposed to show the pinch of the clock. Oh, I think they indicated one second, if I interpret it correctly. But the one second on the clock may be only nine tenths of a second. We don't know unless they show the tenths. That's true. That's true. There is Haskin with a go-ahead hoop here in the final seconds. Excellent game for Haskin tonight with 14 points and 12 rebounds. He's been averaging four more. Well, Don Munson uh, planning this critical last-second strategy. Oregon coming off a two-point tough loss down at Stanford on Sunday. Oregon State celebrating a win over Cal on Sunday and ranked nationally 22 this past week. Oregon State, I'm saying, is going to force them to make a long pass because of a high pass. You don't want them to get a sharp pass once for a high pass or you have a chance to, to get to it. Or else you may say, okay, we're going to give you the end the short one and you can shoot it from there but in all respect you're much better off big r2 they're putting haskin on the man out of bounds they're going to force him to throw that ball high so oregon state can react one second to go and we're going to use another timeout well of course oregon wants to make absolutely sure that everything is understood correctly one second is very little time, and Oregon State conversely wants to make sure they understand their defensive assignments, and they do not want to foul. That's for sure. A reminder that next weekend, Oregon State will host Washington State and Washington, Washington State on Thursday, and next Saturday, the Huskies will be at Gill Coliseum. The Oregon Ducks will also host the Washington Schools. Thursday, it'll be the Huskies. And here at Macport next Sunday, the Washington State Cougars. Players on the floor now for Oregon. Mixon, Reynolds, Helms, Brandon, and Lucas. You know, that ball just barely rolled into that basket. Didn't, for a while, it didn't seem like it was going to make it over that rim to fall into the net. Well, it has a chance of living forever as a dramatic... Yep. A winning goal regardless of how it was scored. Haskin with his height will challenge the inbound of Lucas. Haskin got his hand on the ball and that's it. The game is over. And Oregon has pulled out a two-point victory. The final score in Eugene, Oregon State 69, Oregon 67. points for uh, yes. 
Richard